Well, welcome to the Red Men TV. I'm Chris Pajak and I'm joined by Lee Lawler of Newcastle Fans TV ahead of the big game at Anfield on Saturday, 5.30, Liverpool, Newcastle United, Jurgen Klopp, Rafa Benitez, you know it. Uh, Lee, thanks for joining us first and foremost on the channel, mate. I'm going to get straight into it. How have Newcastle been playing? What can we expect to see from Newcastle this weekend? I think well, since the turn of the year, we've been so much better. One defeat in eight it is at the moment. A lot of them are draws. We're conceding less now that Jamal sells us. Uh, well, there's a song going around about him as well. Southgate's got his number, potentially an England call-up as well, but much better. Uh, we've got a great win against Man United recently, which you boys will obviously love that. Uh, we've only defeats since the turn of the years against two world-class sides in Manchester City and Chelsea. So it's still tight at the bottom of the Premier League, but confident that we'll stay up. What about the team and how, how, how do you think Rafa will set it up? Is it going to be four at the back? Is it going to be three at the back? What do you expect to see from this Benitez side? And also, is Shelby mm -hmm. going to be fit or not? Well, some fans are saying that it was just uh, he was putting on the injury because um, he didn't exactly track back very well. But we'll see. Shelby will want to play. There's no shadow of doubt he'll want to come back. And he's been good against us, hasn't he? Yeah, well, well yeah. We, we, hopefully, I know Swansea has performed against as well. I think Rafa will go four... Four at the back, and then I think he'll go with the two holding midfielders, then then the three attack, and then one up front. I don't think it'll be too top. It's too dangerous. We're going to be very compact, very deep, and just try and hit you on the counter with get Kennedy on the ball, maybe Matt Ritchie. And if Gale's fit, I think Gale will start as well. I know he's got he's caused you uh, headaches in the past as well, which I've seen on your channel, Chris. Um, so if Gale fits, I think he plays, and I think uh, Slimani not fit yet, and maybe we might say Hostel uh, be a bit of a bit of a battery ram later on. What about Rafa Benitez then? How, what's the feeling from Newcastle fans towards the manager at the moment? Absolutely love him. Absolutely love him. You know, I know you love him. I know what he's done for your club as well, but I think for the first time in a long, long time, Newcastle fans are, I wouldn't say calm, but they have a lot more hope. I know we've got a dodgy owner who doesn't put any money in the club and we're kind of stuck at the moment and he's doing wonders because without Rafa Benitez, We'll be mid-table in the championship. We'll be like a lead tonight. We could be sat there in the league for years. And he does give hope. I know we don't have much money. We're not spending much. But you know what it is? It's actually just nice to have a bit of hope mm -hmm. for a change. Because this football club, ever since Sir Bobby Robson, God bless his soul, has left, left sacked unfairly, we've just been like that ever since. And we're still not there. But at least we we'll have someone. We need to throw money at And this table that is massive. It needs to happen. We need to get Mike Ashley out of the club. And he's, he's going to go down on both clubs as a legend, even if he doesn't win nothing for us. Mm. So why why do you think he chose Newcastle? Why do you think he stayed with Newcastle when you went down into the Championship? What, why, what was that about? I think us and you have very similar fans. You know, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm jealous of your success. You know, I say the North Western, well, I know you don't want to say the two Manchester clubs, but they do win. And it's like, well, why can't we have some of that? You know, I'm not saying that we're a top six side, but the next bracket down, why can't we at least compete? I think with Rafa, he wanted a Premier League job because he almost went went to West Ham. His family's at the Wirral. You know, he drives every day. That's commitment alone. That's about a three-hour drive, two, two and a half, three-hour drive every day. That's mad. And then I think it's the fans that saved him. You know, last game of the season when we went down, we actually smashed Spurs 5-1 and we're going down. We're singing Rafa's name. I think... He couldn't walk away because he has that connection. He feels wanted. And ever since he's left Liverpool, he's never felt wanted in that mm. connection, the bond and off the pitch stuff as well. Community does things for both clubs still even now. And I think he likes that. And I think he, he wants to, he wants to do well. And I just kind of see him walking away despite the crap that he gets from the board. Yeah. Okay. And back onto the game this weekend then. Um, if you had to pick a fear from Liverpool's side and going against this Liverpool side, what would it be? Well, that's pretty obvious, you know, what's coming, don't you? Salah, Mane, Firmino. But, you know, everybody talks about those front three all the time. But I think you just got to look at the centre midfield as well. I think Emre Chan's underrated as well. I think he's come on leaps and bounds the last couple of years. Um, you know, Gini Wijnaldum obviously used to be a Newcastle player. Will, will he? I don't think he'll be on the bench, won't he? Um, Jordan Henderson, you know, with England. You know, you do have, I wouldn't say world-class players in midfield, but I think... You know, you have players that don't get appreciated because if you take those front three out, Newcastle fans or fans across the UK will just think, oh, they've only got the only three-man team. But even like the Ox is playing much better with Liverpool than he did at Arsenal. And obviously you've got a couple of young fullbacks, Joe Gomez, uh, 
uh, Alexander uh, Arnold Trent, is that what he's called? Trent Alexander Arnold, yeah. The other way around. Um, Robertson's come come in well yeah. since he's come in. So you do have quality. So it's not just the front three. You've got to work hard. And everybody says the front three, of course, but I'm trying to look at the bigger picture for you. But you would say the front three, wouldn't you? Yeah, oh, no abso- ones, absolutely. Right. And listen, what the Liverpool have to fear from Newcastle going forwards then? I mean, what's a typical Newcastle goal? You know, are they set pieces? Is it working the ball into the box? What is it? Is it a counter-attacker move? What can we expect to see? Ten men mind the ball. <laughs> no, well, actually, you've mentioned set pieces. We have been scoring a lot from set pieces. Jamal Sells is a threat from set pieces as well. I think he's... He's reassured the back line as well. So he's a Liverpool fan for me to say, I've got to win 3 0, 4 0. I wouldn't be so confident of that because with him, the side looks much more better defensively. Going forward, you know, we're going to try and get Shelby on the ball. If he's not fit, I think Michael Marino will come in. He's a bit of a, he's a bit of a ball as well. And then Kennedy's look promising since he's come in as well. Mm-hmm. Richie's back on the form. And I think if Dwight Gale fit, he starts and he'll try and stretch his defence. I think that's where we're going to try and hurt you, is try and stretch your defenders out of position. Okay, brilliant. Listen, thank you very much for joining me, Lee. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, if you've not checked out Lee's channel, it's Newcastle Fans TV. I've done a preview over there on the Liverpool side of things with him. Go and check that out. If you're into it, subscribe, like the video, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Redmen TV.